Hi, friend. Thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome. Glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about Hedera Hashgraph, how it does one thing better than any other chain out there, any other blockchain, any other distributed ledger technology that I've seen. No one comes close to this for this one specific thing. And we're also going to talk about, is this enough to make the HBAR price blow up and perform as well as some of the other chains that are doing really well, like your Solanas and some of your other ones that are just crushing it this bull run? Or is this not enough? And will Hedera perform probably well, but maybe mediocre? We're going to take a look at that. Um, first, a couple quick disclaimers. Nothing here is financial advice. And especially for this video, nothing here is legal advice. If you're a SaaS product, SaaS company looking to build something based on the demo I'm about to uh, describe here or the example scenario, uh, make sure you check this is even a valid idea because I'm just kind of riffing here. But I'm going to give you a demo or not a demo, but a, a demo, uh, an analogy here of, you know, one thing that you could build on Hedera that would be much easier than building somewhere else. OK, so let's get into it. First of all, what is this thing that Hedera does better than any single other distributed ledger technology out there? Well, I'll tell you what it's not. We'll get rid of the boring stuff because no one cares about this anyway. Everyone's doing it. It's not transactions per second. You got chains like Solana, Sui, etc. All doing really well as well. Now, I'm not saying Hedera is worse than those. I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying the narrative that it's the fastest transactions per second whatever, you know, we've heard it. It's all, it's good. It's a good thing, but you know, there's just a lot of, I'd say Solana probably has the, will be most likely the one that's used for things like high frequency trading uh, directly on chain, but it doesn't mean Hedera can't perform as well. It just means that it's just kind of not doing it better than anyone else. Likewise, it's not doing time to finality better than anyone else. You know, it's just, you know, beyond lots of people are doing that. Um, it's not scalability like Solana, Sui, lots of others, Near Protocol, so many others, also good at scaling. So Hedera performs on par with these, definitely can keep up with them all, might even do a little better in certain scenarios, but they all scale really well. This is not an area where Hedera is beating everyone else. A left zero, another comes to mind, another example. So Hedera is great here, is not going to take anything away from it, but there are lots of other competitors offering low fee block space uh, that can stay on par with Hedera here, and they also have a lot more daily active users. So that's what it's not. What is it? What is this thing I'm talking about then that Hedera can do better than any other chain that no one else does this whatsoever? All right, here it is. Basically, Web2 data verification and integrity using Hedera consensus service. Now, let me give an example of that so you know what I'm talking about. Let's say that you are a SaaS startup, you know, and you want to get into the consent business. You see like these cookie consents, or you want to get into the legal disclaimer business. And you're really passionate about extreme sports writers. And extreme sports writers, well, they love creating content about doing crazy stuff like, hey man, Here's me rock climbing with no rope attached. You should check it out. But make sure, here's my disclaimer at the beginning of the video, make sure you don't do this at home. But all it is is just a text disclaimer. And, you know, some of these extreme sports writers, they're like, yeah, I'm not really, uh, I, still, I still have to go to court. People try and sue me. Now, I usually win because, you know, I have a big disclaimer and people are saying they didn't see it. Well, you know, I usually win. It usually rules in my favor. But they like a little more protection. They'd feel safe. If there was a super cheap solution out there where a user could just check a box saying, I agree that if I try something that I watched you try on your blog or YouTube channel, I simply agree that if I try it, it's not your fault. And yeah, if someone has just a checkbox for me or I can put that on my site somehow in my channel, uh, and that can be audited in court really easily, with no cost to my business and lawyers not spending days figuring out if the data wasn't tampered with. Yeah, I'd give you money for that. I'd give you 10, 20 bucks a month. Sounds like it's worth it to me. Um, so we have a good idea, right? We have a business idea here. Let's get into the disclaimer consent business and provide extreme sports writers with a little pop-up window and a checkbox that says, I agree that I won't go rock climbing because you went rock climbing. And then if I fall, I won't come after you. 
because it's not your fault. Okay, boom. Now, I think you know where I'm going with this. The SaaS company's like, okay, well, this is pretty easy. It's not too hard. You make a JavaScript widget that they can embed into their website. When they press the button, it creates a database record in my SaaS product that says this user with this email consented to this agreement that says they won't try this thing, or if they do, they don't hold the uh, writer liable on this date. And boom, everything's pretty cool so far. We see a lot of these out there. I wouldn't don't recommend getting into this business because a lot of people dominating it already. But the thing is, so far, we only have Web 2 data. We have Web 2 data stored in a database that can be tampered with. You know, maybe someone could hack in here. Maybe the writer could go in here right there and say, you know what? I'm just going to check that this guy agreed to this. And sometimes if it's not stored well, there's no way of verifying it, verifying that this guy didn't go in here and, 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 and change it himself. Now, you get into forensics, and someone can probably figure that out, a pro, but now you're talking about a lot of money and a lot of diving that this guy would have to pay to prove that he didn't do it, right? So what's the next step? Well, we take the data, we take the user's ID, we take the user's email, we take the consent they agreed to, and we take the date and time that he, he agreed to it, and we turn it into a, a hash. And so what that means is that the hash is unique to this piece of data, and what we would do is we would store this hash in another location. Oftentimes it's in another centralized area. But what, we can, what that gives us is we know if that the data changes in here in the original record, the hash will be different. And so it would no longer line up with the original hash. So you know the data has been tampered with, right? Okay, so you know where I'm going now. You store it on chain, right? That's what blockchains are for. Yes. And so that's it. And you store this on a blockchain. And so you have many, uh, many chains available, high performant high scaling, they sell block space for very cheap. Problem is, when you do these on every single other chain, this idea, this type of venture, it could be millions of things like this, is the equivalent of using a screwdriver turned around and the fat end of a screwdriver to pound in a nail versus using a hammer. Hedera Consensus Service gives you the hammer. With Hedera's consensus service, there's, it was built for this type of thing. Why is that? Because you can organize messages by topic and it, it's ordered, you have ordering built into it already for the consensus service. So in other words, this user clicks this checkbox. The data that this user agreed to is stored in the Web2 database. A hash is created. It's posted to the blockchain uh, with and the consensus that the post is valid is verified through decentralized nodes. And then it's appended using Hedera's consensus service to a topic that was created by the SaaS product. And what would the topic be in this case? Well, the topic would be this specific extreme sports writer. So Johnny's rock climbing school, right? So the topic is Johnny's, Johnny's rock climbing school. And every message to Johnny's rock climbing school is a hash of this data that hasn't been altered. It's the original data with the original time by the original user. And so now here's where it's a hammer instead of a screwdriver. If you need to build something so an auditor can easily log in and not only pull the Web 2 data where it says, yeah, Johnny in plain text clearly, clearly said I agree to these terms. But we can also clearly at the same time easily query Hashgraph much more efficiently and easier, way easier than, than querying a regular blockchain. And we can say, yep, yeah, the hashes match. Data hasn't been tampered with. It took me one second to figure that out. So... You're saving the exports writer lots and lots of money if he gets sued by having an auditor not have to do all these crazy forensics to make sure the data hasn't been tampered with. And that's because this SaaS company who's building this can easily build a simple dashboard that queries both the database and Hedera consensus service to see that, yeah, here's the data, here's the hash, it matches in both locations. This user agreed that when he watches this, he's not... The, the, that sports writer who wrote about it is not liable. Boom. Okay. Now you research this and you start looking at different blockchains around the globe, the net, all the networks that are out there. No one does this better than Hedera. Hedera has created the hammer to pound in the nail for this. Such a cool tool. And this is just one example of a product a SaaS company could build. There are millions of use cases for verifying the integrity of Web2 data. So many. I just can't think of them. There's just too many. So... 
Hedera thought of this well in advance, and that's why they built Hedera Consensus Service, and it's super, super powerful. Now, does that mean that the price of Hedera, the HBAR token, I should say, does that mean the HBAR token is going to perform as well as Solana this bull run, as well as near this bull run, as well as Avalanche maybe, as well as some of the others? Not necessarily. If you watch this channel, you know that my thesis has changed when it comes to retail investing in cryptocurrency. My older videos from, say, uh, 2022, some of 2023, were all about, you know, kind of like enterprise utility is going to win the day. You solve business problems, your, the value of your token is going to blow up. And if you watch this, you know that late last year, early this year, I did a big pivot on that, and I pivoted, and I also reallocated my bags. I still have some HBAR, uh, but I did a good, a good uh, reallocation to more of what I would call Metcalf's Law bags, meaning blockchains that have good network adoption metrics, daily active users, um, number of transactions, number of developers. Hedera actually crushing it on number of developers, number one over about a month ago. So uh, things like that but also things like network revenue. How much revenue is the network generating? How many people are using it every day? Daily active users we talked about. Daily active entities, important. And that could shine really well for Hedera. So with this channel, what I like to look at ultimately are four things. I like to look at the macro. You know, what's the macro environment? Huh? I like to look at the network effects. You know, what's the daily active user counts? What's the developer action? What's the daily active entities? I like to look at ratios within that. I like to do cohort analysis with inside, like, for example, rich lists. You see those frequency distributions? Well, they serve a purpose. You can compare ratios with other ones, and you can see, oh, yeah, this chain's got a much stronger middle class than this one. Oh, powerful stuff. And then finally, narrative. Now, is enterprise utility a strong, hot narrative versus AI, versus gaming, versus... Some of the other narratives going around there versus chain abstraction and user experience. I would say no, not yet. Not the hottest narrative, not a bad narrative, but it's not the hottest narrative. So when I sum all these up and I look at it, I, I look at Metcalfs, I look at the revenue, I look at the trending narratives, and I see that there are some challenges here. So when it comes to, if I'm a SaaS company wanting to build something like this, Hedera crushes it hands down. No one touches this. No one touches this. But when I look at the network revenue for Hedera, it's a challenge because the fees are so low that it's great for the SaaS company. You can do 10,000 um, consents here, storing it on chain for a dollar. It's probably some of the cheapest out there. I don't even think you can do it that cheaply on Solana or Sui. So 10,000 transactions on Hedera consensus service for roughly a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty. That's a lot of margin for this Web2 SaaS company to like get some profit. If you're charging $10 a month to have this consent given to the sports writer, and the benefit is, yeah, you, you're an auditor can look this up in a second if you need to, if you're in court. Probably worth paying for. So from the business, the Web2, from the, from the, from the app company building on Hedera, it's great. But from the investor, the, the retail and the institutional investor looking at investing in the network, they're going to look at daily active users. They're going to look at network revenue. They're going to look at how much revenue does Hedera bring in and where's that revenue coming from and how is that going to affect the token price? And so ultimately, I look at all these and you don't know for sure. But I do know this. I've done some price predictions on Hedera. I'll leave links in the video be uh, below to those videos if you want to watch and see uh, the methodology I used. And I can see potential, what are we at, six cents? I can see a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten x from here possible just based on basic market cap dominance modeling. If, you know, for example, the market cap got to 10 trillion and Hedera stayed in position 30 where it is now. Seems like, you know, you could get to a 5x easily just with that. So um, I'm comfortable holding it and selling it all. But ultimately, what moves the price? What's going to make the price of HBAR go up? Well, it's simple. It's if you have done anyone who's done a little bit of research in, in trading and investing, there's only one thing really that moves the price and that you have a market of buyers and sellers and buyers are putting in more money than what the sellers are selling because they have FOMO. They think it's going up. And so these buyers, 
just need that reason to kick in that FOMO. And so with some of the other chains right now, the reasons is the reasons are Metcalf's law, things getting great adoption, um, network revenue, things bringing in some major network revenue, macro conditions, global liquidity is increasing. Crypto does well then. Uh, narratives, got strong narratives. Now, when I look at all these metrics with HBAR, I give it decent grades, but there are other chains that are better as well. So ultimately, I think this thing needs to have some FOMO to kick it in for the price to, you know, let's say instead of five to 10 X, do something crazy like a 10 to 30 X this bull run. But it's possible. We'll have to see everybody. Uh, it, there needs to be some sort of FOMO trigger for HBAR to totally take off and outperform. We saw an example of one when the BlackRock news dropped and HBAR spiked up to 20 cents. That was epic. We need something like that again, and something that's gonna stick a little stronger. All right? All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.